Hello everyone, you're all very welcome to the session today. Thanks as always for taking the time to come along to it. Um, so the training session today is going to be looking at Original, which is MTU Cork's new plagiarism detection system. Um, I'm hoping not to take up too much of your time and I'll try to keep this training session between 30 and 40 minutes. Um, but if there are any questions, obviously more than happy to try and answer those at the end. And what I'm hoping to kind of get through in the session today is really just um, an overview of how to create original assignments, how to change Turnitin assignments into original assignments, accessing the results um, available and navigating the original interface. So maybe just to begin, um, this is the kind of agenda for the day, but um, just a very brief overview of the original system. Basically, original has replaced Turnitin in Canvas as M2 Cork's plagiarism detection system. As some of you might be aware, even if you remember back in the days when we had Blackboard instead of Canvas, we are obliged as an institute to tender for new systems every couple of years. We tendered for an anti-plagiarism detection system. Um, Turnitin did not apply for that tender, so there was no chance of being able to go with them again anyway. Um, and Original was the winner of the chosen bid. So very much like Turnitin, Original provides an indication of detected plagiarism like with Turnitin. Um, but there's a couple of additional benefits to Original. One is that it also catches unusual use of characters, unusual use of formatting, if material has been kind of translated from one language into another, even the user's writing style. Also, original is far more deeply integrated into Canvas than Turnitin. And what that means, hopefully, for MTU Cork staff is basically just a more pleasant user experience. It's easier to kind of set up, to uh, get at the results, to analyze, and it's all very much built in in, into Canvas in a way that Turnitin wasn't. So it just makes the entire process a little bit easier. Um, and it supports sharing and adjustment to plagiarism findings and has additional features in beta that I mentioned, like checking uh, against multiple languages, seeing differences in user writing styles, so on and so forth. I might mention as well that um, the use of original is um, shared across both Cork and Kerry campuses. So it's um, it's a system that uh, both Cork and Kerry are using together. And we both kind of uh, did so in kind of a, a coordinated way, both kind of moved, um, broke up with Turnitin basically to move on to original. So that out of the way, what I'd like to get into straight away is kind of to uh, demonstrate the process of creating an original assignment in Canvas. So very simply, the way this works is that we are going to go into our assignments area inside in our Canvas module. And like we usually would, we're going to create an assignment. So I would mention that the process of creating an original assignment in Canvas is nearly identical to the process of setting up a regular old assignment in Canvas. So we're gonna click on this blue assignment button to create a new assignment. As usual, uh, we're going to give it a title. So I'm just gonna call this original assignment two and a description. Um, we can leave all the settings how we usually would. Now under submission type, most Canvas assignments, I think would generally tend to be a file upload assign submission type. That's what we recommend. We found it to just be the most reliable, the most straightforward, so on and so forth. When a submission type is set to either text entry or to file upload, what you will see appearing in Canvas down the page a bit is this additional option for plagiarism review. If I turn off file upload, that disappears, but if file upload or text entry is selected, this plagiarism review section appears. And all we're going to do inside here is simply click on the drop down and select original. Now that, that is gonna pull up one or two other options. For the most part, I don't think that these are anything that you would need to select or worry about. Anonymous just means that kind of the system will hide whose work they're showing you within original. Um, so you can maybe mark more anonymously. And there is also the option to not save documents submitted to this assignment in Orkund. And all that means is if you remember with Turnitin, it basically means that kind of generally when students submit to a system like this, their submissions are added to this kind of gigantic repository against which future submissions are checked. Um, so basically, if a student last year submits a paper and a student this year tries to submit the same paper, by default, the system will say, hey, these two are identical. If you want to, you can turn off that feature by clicking on this button, but generally it's kind of useful to leave it on 
um, just as a way of kind of ensuring that kind of there's a bigger repository with which to detect potential plagiarism. The other option, and this is kind of an important one, is at the bottom of this section. And it asks whether you want to show reports to students immediately or after the assignment is graded or after the due date. So this is like these two settings are not too important. This one maybe is a little bit more important. If I identify that I want to show the report to students immediately, it means that they can see the results of the plagiarism detection um, as soon as original is finished processing them. If I want to set it to after the assignment is graded, it means they won't see the results until after I have given marks and feedback to the assignment. If it's after the due date, it's kind of after the deadline has passed. And I suppose the reason that this setting is important is if this is set to immediately, it means that students can, if you want to, re-upload to the assignment. So the process from a student point of view, if it's immediately, is that I'm going to submit to uh, the assignment. I'm going to get feedback from original pretty quickly within an hour or two to say, OK, 50 percent of this is showing up as plagiarized. And I, as a student, then have the possibility to go off, edit the assignment and resubmit it so that there's less uh, plagiarism detection or potential plagiarism detection showing up. If this is set to, for example, never or until after the assignment is graded, what that means is that, for, again, from a student perspective, I'm going to submit to this uh, assignment. Um, I'm not going to get any feedback. Original is going to identify to you, the lecturer, OK, this is showing up as 50 percent plagiarized. And then the student will not kind of be able to review the plagiarism detection until after the assignment is graded. So whether it's immediately or whether it's after the assignment is graded, essentially kind of determines whether a student is able to resubmit, whether they're able to see the results of the potential plagiarism detection and resubmit. Um, so that is worth maybe considering. Obviously, it is to each individual's own preference as to what they would prefer their students to do. Um, and uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to within a speed grader. I'll try and show it if I have time. Um, it is possible to identify, for example, OK, uh, Johnny, uh, who's a student, submitted on Monday last, but he also submitted on Friday last. And you can view both of those submissions within the same place in um, SpeedGrader. And SpeedGrader, or excuse me, Original does have the ability as well. It will, uh, it will try and avoid instances of self-plagiarism. So, for example, if Johnny submits um, against a particular assignment and then submits a second time with, you know, a somewhat but not entirely different document, Original will not compare Johnny's first submission against Johnny's submission, second submission, or will at least be able to differentiate between those two. So I might talk a bit more about that at the end, if that's OK with you, Anna. But um, generally, multiple attempts, uh, sorry, within the assignment, yeah, you should. You can set that to allowed attempts, or you can set that to limited attempts. Um, but just on that note, um, generally, uh, or instances of self-plagiarism don't happen when a student submits multiple times to the same assignment. So that is essentially all that is required in order to make an original assignment available. So just to very quickly recap, we create an assignment as we usually would. Um, and if the assignment is set to text entry or file upload, very simply what we can do is we can select the plagiarism review to original. We don't really need to worry for the most part about these two settings, so I can leave those alone. And then it is to each lecturer's own individual preference, whether they want students to be able to see the results of the plagiarism detection, and if so, when that will be visible to the, um, to the student. When we're happy enough with all of that, we can click Save and Publish. And what I'm going to very briefly do is just jump into Student View so that from a student perspective, they click Start Assignment, they click on Upload File, and there is, if you'll notice, this, um, this kind of tick box, which uh, students have to tick to identify that the assignment submission is their own original work. And I guess all that does is it's just kind of getting some kind of agreement from the student that the submission that what they're submitting is uh, is their own work and is not plagiarized. So that is the process of setting up an original assignment. Now it might happen that particularly at the start of the semester, I last semester used a Turnitin assignment, and what I want to do is um, I want to. Uh, uh, change um, that Turnitin assignment because Turnitin is no longer supported into an original assignment. The process for doing that is very um, straightforward. 
All that I need to do with this turn it in assignment, which I set up previously, I simply click on the menu item over on the right hand side here. And from that, I select edit. That brings up a pop up and I simply click on more options. And what you'll see with what was a turn it in assignment is that generally it is set to external tool. So this would be set to external tool and there will be a URL for turn it in inside there. So all I need to do is I can simply set that to online, select file upload, and then go about setting up the original assignment as we just looked at in the previous, um, in the previous assignment. So the process again for setting up a, um, or changing, I should say, I turn it in an assignment to an original assignment, simply click on the, the option to edit the turn it in assignment over here, click on edit, more options, and then to simply change for the submission type from external tool to online file upload. Um, Jason asks, how many attempts can a student upload to original? Uh, Jason, the um, number of attempts uh, submitted to original really kind of depends on um, basically the settings inside Canvas. So I can set the submission types to unlimited or I can set it to limited. Um, and that really determines how often the student can upload to original because the student's experience of original will really only ever be through Canvas, if that makes sense. It is one of the benefits of the thing um, that basically um, everything is set up within the Canvas environment. And it's only really when you're looking at the results of the plagiarism detection that you have to move out of Canvas. Otherwise, everything is pretty much available within Canvas. And Original will take all its cues in terms of the number of attempts, so on and so forth, from within the Canvas assignment. So all of that said, if we um, have a, uh, an original assignment that students have already submitted to, what we can do is um, we can view the results of the plagiarism detection. And the way in which we can do this is this is an assignment which I set up earlier and had a student submit to. So the way we can do this is again, kind of quite deeply integrated into the kind of Canvas process. So we click into the assignment in question and what I can do is I can click over here on SpeedGrader. And SpeedGrader, for anyone unfamiliar, is basically Canvas's kind of marking system. It allows you to add grades, overall comments, and there's a number of tools up here that you can use to add in specific commentary for specific elements within um, a student submission. Generally, um, you know, all of the marking kind of items are available within this environment and over on the kind of right hand side here and the comment kind of area here. What original does is within SpeedGrader, it offers uh, an additional small section, which is this similarity score, which is showing up here. So when a student has submitted to the Canvas assignment and when original has determined the results of the potential plagiarism, this will appear inside in speed grader over here. So this is the score that has been detected uh, for potential plagiarism for this particular student submission. And if you want to access the results uh, or view more detailed analysis of the uh, plagiarism detection score, all you need to do is simply click on that score. And what that will do is it will redirect you to the original uh, analysis report we can get more detailed information on this particular assignment. So if I want to see the results of the uh, plagiarism detection, basically all I do is I go into the assignment, I click on speed grader, which I would usually do to give marks and feedback anyway. And after the result has been generated, I just click on this icon. And that will bring me to the analysis report. Um, what you might find as well, just FYI, is that when the um, score or when the uh, original is trying to calculate the um, when original is trying to calculate the plagiarism detection when it's still kind of processing instead of a score what might appear here is a little timer icon um, and all that means is that original is currently kind of generating the analysis report and the detected potential plagiarism um, and yeah once it's completed um, the processing of that the little timer icon will change into uh, the similarity report score. Now, obviously for this particular assignment, what I did was I just took a HSE document or excuse me, a, a Department of Education document and I threw it into the system. So obviously this is returning a very large plagiarism detection score. 
Um, so the, for the purpose of this training session, what I've done is I've selected a slightly less obvious um, plagiarism, uh, excuse me, student submission or kind of analysis report uh, to try and explain what the analysis overview is and how to use this kind of analysis report. So we've gone from speed grader, we've clicked on the score, and this has brought us into the uh, original analysis report. Um, the interface for this um, provides a number of kind of initial areas. Um, the first thing that you will see is this analysis overview. And what this gives you is just a very broad indication of how many pages detected potential plagiarism. And those will be kind of visible in this area here. So you can see here on page one, um, the area highlighted in orange is potentially uh, is potential plagiarism. Then there's another one on page four, on page 10, page 11, page 12, so on and so forth. What you can do if you want to is um, as in a way of immediately kind of getting into um, potential plagiarism. I can simply click on the um, on the orange section, let's say for page one. And what that will do is it will pull up. Um, you can see here the text within the student submission and then beneath that where the potential plagiarism has come from. So this is potentially taken from this website and it gives a URL to that same website. I can, if I want to, click on view details here. And what that will do is it will basically kind of take, bring me to an expanded version of this particular um, uh, potentially detected plagiarism. So we can see here that over on the left hand side is what is in the submitted document. And over on the right hand side is what text has been kind of uh, identified as potentially matching. And you can see there that that has been kind of color highlighted to identify where different kind of sections or kind of blocks of text might be um, uh, 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 potential plagiarism. So just to jump back to the kind of main page, that is one immediate way of getting into it by clicking on the, um, on the initial kind of hi orange highlighted bits of text in the different pages and clicking on view detail. Another way of doing it is if you scroll down the page, what you can do is you can click on the option here for findings. So findings presents 19 instances of matching text where there's been high similarity of content and three warnings where there are unusual use of characters. And I'll maybe talk a little bit about that in a second. You can also, if you want to click to view the entire document and that basically gives you the entire document all on one page and the sections where there has been potential plagiarism detected are highlighted in orange. And I can click on the icon to the right-hand side to bring up that same area we were looking at a moment ago. If all of this seems a bit confusing, um, please don't worry too much about it. Essentially, all the different kind of areas here are, are kind of different routes to get a pretty much the same thing or the same kind of area. For what it's worth, my own personal preference, if I'm looking at an analysis report, is what I do is I go down to this area here, which is under findings, and I click on the option for matching text. Now, what this area will do is basically it's pulling up all the different instances across the entire document where particular where uh, potential plagiarism has been detected. And what I can do is I can look, okay, this is on page one of 19. There's 44% chance of matching text. When I made a decision on kind of that, I can click down the page here on next highlight, move on to the next one, move on to the next one, move back to the previous one, so on and so forth. So um, this is a way in which I can kind of go through quite systematically any kind of potential plagiarism instances. If you look along the top of the screen, I can also click on the entire document tab if I have a preference to kind of view it this way, to go through the entire thing as a way of being able to kind of read through the document and say, okay, there's potential plagiarism here, down the page, there's another instant, instance of it here, so on and so forth. Now, if we jump back into the, um, the findings section for a moment, um, you'll notice that there are a number of options available to us also just inside in this kind of section here. So one of the most important ones off the bat is this option here to include in analysis. So basically what this does is it gives you the option to kind of, um, you can see here that this is a very low similarity score of 7%. What I can do if I want to immediately is kind of make a determination if this is actual plagiarism or if it isn't. And I guess it is worth mentioning that 
obviously, like with Turnitin, this is a system for detecting potential plagiarism. That 7% similarity score is not an absolute, and it does not mean that absolutely, without doubt, 7% of this is plagiarized. All of these systems are really just potential plagiarism, and it does bear some kind of investigation as uh, every time as to whether actual plagiarism has happened or not. But back to the point, if I want to, what I can very simply do is I can say, okay, this to my mind isn't plagiarism. And I'm gonna click on the include in analysis option to turn that off. I'm gonna hop onto the next highlight when I'm happy enough with done that. I don't think this is potential plagiarism. I don't think this is potential, potential plagiarism. I don't think this is potential plagiarism, so on and so forth. And what you can see here is that the similarity score has gone from 7% to 6%. So depending on what I do in the area here, it's possible to get a more accurate um, similarity, similarity score uh, by identifying what I consider, what I do or do not include in the analysis. So hopefully that's straightforward enough. Again, in terms of how this process might work, once I'm in the analysis overview, what I personally like to do is I go into the matching text instance and I can simply work through the different highlights and as I go through them, decide if I'm considering this to be or not be potential plagiarism, and so on and so forth. There is also a number of options along the top here, which offer a couple of additional um, adjustments for uh, determining whether something is pl plagiarism or is not. It might be easier to hop into the entire document as a way of doing this. So what I can do in here is I can turn on or off quotes, which determines if material in quotes should be in, uh, included as potential plagiarism or not. Um, so obviously if I'm quoting a publication or a paper, um, if this is off, then that means it's going to um, it's going to uh, decide whether or not to include anything within quotation marks uh, in the plagiarism detection or not. The same with brackets then, just to identify if material in brackets should be included as potential plagiarism or not. And detailed text differences then just determines if originals should include, I suppose, general or specific material as potential plagiarism or not. Another option which is worth considering is, for example, students might submit a particular paper to me, um, but for that paper, I might be asking them to reference a particular document extensively, or it might be the case, let's say, that every year for this assignment, I give students a very particular template that I want them to use. And what you might find is that kind of plagiarism detection scores are showing up as very high because, um, because uh, you know, the system is kind of identifying Oh, well, you know, this kind of template shows up, this kind of paper is being quoted a lot, so on and so forth. So what you can do inside in the sources area is basically I can say, OK, anything from um, sorry, actually, where this might be easier is to pull up the previous kind of submission that I was that we uh, looked at. Basically, um, for this particular submission, obviously, it is a Department of Education document, so the one major source is going to be from um, this particular source. And if we go into the sources tab at the top of the screen, basically what I can do is I can simply click on the arrow icon here. And what I can do is I can say, okay, let's say I wanted students to quote extensively from this. I know that this particular source is not being ripped off by students. So what I can simply do is I can simply click on the tick box here. That will uh, identify whether I want to choose to exclude the primary source. And this just gives me a small bit of control as to what I want to um, what I want to draw from in terms of this source. But if I click save and continue, you'll see that the score has gone from like 97% down to 2%. So that can be a useful feature if, let's say, for example, you find that there are repeated instances of um, a particular source being quoted, but it's not really appropriate um for that to be identified as plagiarism i can basically turn off an entire source and one thing which might be useful here potentially is that mtu cork will show up as a source so it might be the case that let's say you know again if i give students a very specific template that a lot of other students have already submitted to mtu cork might show up as a source here in which case i can turn it off and stop the um plagiarism detection detection score showing up as particularly high 
Um, Anna asks, can you set up original to exclude text in quotation marks by default in an assignment? It's a good question, Anna. We can ask original about that, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure how possible it is on an individual level beyond kind of going, let's say, into the analysis report and just clicking off the quotes option. Um, but um, that is something we can kind of look at. Um, in turn, Vanessa asks, can you turn off predictable sources ahead of time? It's a good question, Vanessa. I know that original have a facility where you can upload, let's say, um, yeah, a list of kind of, as you said, predictable sources and even kind of white papers or kind of templates that will kind of, you know, tell original, okay, don't pick up any of this as potential plagiarism, but it's something we'd have to look into. Um, that's kind of linked to, you know, an identity management kind of issue that we're kind of trying to work through with original at the moment. So um, for the most part, uh, sorry, for the, it is something we'll kind of continue to look at, but for the moment, I think probably the best bet would simply be to go into sources when you're looking at the analysis report and very simply just kind of turn on or off any of these sources as required. Just um, to mention as well, there are one or two other elements um, in terms of this interface. Um, if I've made a number of adjustments to the system, but I wanted to kind of revert those, so I want to bring those back to the way they were, what I can do is I can go up here and I can click on this reset report state. So if I click on that, what that will do is it will basically kind of undo all of the changes or any adjustments that I've made in terms of determining the potential plagiarism score. So you can see that that has gone back to 100% from 2%. Um, the similarity area, by the way, isn't a bad kind of, uh, isn't a bad kind of quick check. 18% um, receivers average. What that means is basically kind of in non-plagiarized work, you know, it might show up as maybe an average of 18% across the board, just as an indication of kind of anything essentially above this percentage might bear investigation. Obviously, it's important, as we mentioned, to try and be as thorough as possible and to not take any kind of analysis score as like an absolute. But that's not a bad kind of quick check in terms of um, whether potential plagiarism has been kind of widespread in a particular document. As well as resetting the report status, you can also click on this icon and that will download the analysis report as a PDF. So if I click on that, what it will do is it will um, download the analysis report as a PDF and provide me with um, a fairly detailed analysis or a fairly detailed PDF uh, which provides an analysis of how the score was generated, um, you know, where in the document it kind of showed up, so on and so forth. Now, the only danger with that is obviously it might be kind of massive, depending on the size of the uh, analysis and the um, document and the submitted work from the student. Um, Carol, it doesn't, unfortunately. So Carol asks, if you turn off a source for one student submission, does it turn off for the rest of the submission in the class? So it doesn't. What you would need to do is when you're looking at each individual student's work, um, very simply, just go into matching text, click into sources, and turn off a particular source. Now, as I mentioned, um, or as Vanessa asked, turning off predictable uh, sources ahead of time is something we're investigating. But for the moment, it would just involve um, turning it off individually. Luckily, that genuinely doesn't take too long. If I land into the report, I just go matching text, sources, turn this off. An additional element then is um, just the uh, ability to uh, access help within original. The way you can do that is if you want to, you can click on this um, icon here to get help. That will give you that will bring up this kind of this walkthrough of the system so if at any stage you're not sure about kind of how to navigate through this you can click on that icon to bring up a uh, an analysis tour and that will just kind of walk you through the different sections how each of these kind of work what they provide you with so on and so forth you can also if you want to click on the profile item up here and from here you can turn on quotes turn on brackets so on and so forth you can export it you can do everything that we've kind of looked at so far. We can also click on support. And what that will do is will basically bring you to the original support page where you can kind of get at their email, their telephone number, um, you can fill in the form, so on and so forth. And you can also click help here and that will give you kind of a PDF 
uh, guide to the analysis report. So if at any stage you're not sure what to do, there are a couple of options available from the kind of uh, interactive tour to the uh, PDF to being able to go directly to the original analysis support page. Or excuse me, the uh, yeah the uh, original support page. Now one or two other options, just in terms of the system, um, is if we go to this other student submission, you'll see here there is also an option here for warnings. So whereas matching text identifies potentially plagiarized material, what warnings does is it basically pulls up where there is an unusual use of characters. Um, as identified there, it contains words with characters assembled from different scripts or writing errors, uh, and this can often be caused by conversion errors or special characters. So what some students might do, not MTU Cork students, of course, but other less uh, honorable students out there, is what they might do is they might take uh, existing material from uh, a resource or whatever, and they might try and basically trick these kind of plagiarism detection systems by let's say removing spaces or replacing spaces with um, underscores or things like that. So the, um, the kind of warnings within original identify where, for example, um, the use of characters is slightly unusual or there is something like slightly unusual in terms of the use of capitalization, um, things like that. But for the most part, it refers to suspicious use of characters or symbols. Um, another one is maybe replacing the use of the word S with dollar signs, just as a way of throwing off these kind of systems. So what original will do is it will also highlight the use of suspicious characters or symbols. So if there's, these are being used in an unusual way. Now, for the most part, these, you know, you, you can tell at a glance whether this is something to be concerned about or not. Um, and you can, as appropriate, turn those off. It might happen that for the most part, these are completely harmless, but it is a useful feature just to be able to, um, that the system is able to flag particular uh, unusual use of characters. And generally those just bear a very, very quick investigation, but almost at a glance, you can tell if there is something suspicious there or not. Other features which original uh, is kind of has in beta, um, they're not visible here, but are kind of in beta and are kind of on the way is that the system can also determine whether something has been translated. So whether, for example, I have taken a resource or a source uh, that is written in French and ran it through Google Translate to bring it into English and then kind of put that through. That's another way that kind of students might be able to get around these kind of systems or fool these kind of systems. And also the writing style. So original also has a system in beta for identifying where someone's writing style changes dramatically. And obviously where that can be a cause for concern is if a student has a very particular writing style, um, but like 50% of the rest of their submission is in a slightly different format or in a slightly different style. Again, that is kind of a potential instance of plagiarism. So in terms of um, maybe one or two additional considerations, just to be aware of at the moment, original might send you a lot of emails to identify when a document has been submitted, when a similarity report has been completed, so on and so forth. Now we have requested that original turn these off for MTU staff, because obviously everybody gets enough emails as it is, um, but that is something which um, uh, we believe they have done. Um, but maybe just to note that if you are getting a couple of emails from original, um, you know, in terms of, you know, Mary has submitted to this assignment, Johnny has submitted to this assignment, maybe just let us know at edtech at mtu.ie and we'll get on to original to follow up on that. Um, as I mentioned, you know, um, these are potential plagiarism detection systems, so please don't take the similarity score, similarity score as gospel. Um, you know, more often than not, there is a very innocent explanation for plagiarism detection findings. Um, so yeah, maybe just to check those out if possible. Um, uh, in terms of multiple submissions, if a student, and this is a question which arose earlier, if a student submits multiple drafts of an assignment from the same email address, it will not be used as a source in the analysis report. So basically what that means, if Dara Coakley as a student is logging in to Canvas and submitting to a particular assignment multiple times, Original is able to identify, okay, well, look, that's the same student. It's coming from the same assignment. It's obviously not um, him plagiarizing from his own work. 
Um, but if I am, for instance, logging in and submitting to the same assignment under two different email addresses, then obviously the system is not able to identify or determine that um, I'm the same person. So it is possible from, for, let's say, for students to self-plagiarize, but that would only happen in the unlikely event that I'm logging into Canvas and submitting to the same assignment under two different accounts. Nonetheless, the real kind of key to this is to check the analysis report thoroughly. And there is also an option to turn off the MTU source that we looked at, or if the system thinks that I am the same student submitting to the same thing twice, there will be an option or an item in the analysis report for conflicting copies that can be turned on or off. So that is maybe something which we'll come back to in terms of training at a later date. Um, it's just something we're trying to get a bit more information from original about. Um, and Anna makes an excellent point that if you are getting a lot of emails, um, staff can set up rules in Outlook to manage these and redirect them to a specific folder. So obviously, if you have any problems at all like that, just contact Anna and feel free to contact her anytime, day or night. Uh, about uh, how to do just that. I'm only kidding. Please don't bother, Anna. Um, you can ask um, Service Desk about any kind of email requests with that. Um, there is also the option to upload on behalf of a student. Um, and where this might be particularly useful is if you have postgrads and they want to kind of check their own work independently. Now, at the moment, we're working through the process of, um, I don't know if Kind of many remember there was an option with Turnitin to log into the Turnitin.com website and upload on behalf of a student. We're working with Original to kind of sort all of that out. But for the moment, what I would recommend is basically the easiest way to do that is all staff should have been given a sandbox when Canvas was set up day one or some kind of test module. So the easiest thing to do with that is to simply go into an assignment that isn't kind of, let's say, mainstream delivery. So there isn't a huge amount of students using it create an assignment and just upload as a test student. That option is available. You just click on student view, go into the assignment and submit against it within student view. So you can submit students work on behalf of that student. And again, the way to do that is to go into your sandbox module, go into student view and submit to an original assignment to get that. And obviously the process is the same then in terms of clicking on the plagiarism detection score and being able to see that. And if you want to, you can share that with students by clicking on the profile, click on um, share analysis report, and you can send this, you can email, um, you can put the student email in there as a way of giving them access to the results of the analysis report. Like I mentioned, um, the original kind of help page is available if you go to profile and go to support. But for the most part, there is an email address support at original.com and they have a phone number, which is English speaking. It is a Swedish company. So that is a Swedish number, but they are English speaking. And as I mentioned, you can also access resources inside the system by going up to profile, support, help, or clicking on that, um, on that help icon. Also, we have in our help center at tellhelp.eu.helpdocs.com. Um, but easier way to remember is just tell.cit.ie. And you can click on the, um, on the support item there to get at the staff help articles. Um, but anyway, there is a section inside there for original that goes through all of the different elements that we've covered here in terms of creating a result, accessing, uh, creating an assignment, accessing results, changing a turn it in assignment to an original assignment, so on and so forth. So if you have any difficulties, please feel free to use that. So that is it for the session. I just about kept it under the 40 minutes that I said that I would. But if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to take those now. If you want to, you can uh, put those into the chat area or I'm just pulling up. Uh, there is a Q&A option available as well if anyone wants to, uh, wants to make use of that. So I'm just going to shut up. If, um, if anyone has any questions, please type them away. If you don't have any questions, maybe just throw a no into the chat area just so I can get some kind of sense of whether people are typing or whether everyone is happy enough.
Okay, so look, it looks like thing, people are relatively okay. Uh, if, you do have any, if you do have a question, please do feel, feel, for, feel free to finish typing it in. Otherwise, all that's left to say is thanks very much, everyone, for attending the training. We'll obviously be doing more training over the next couple of weeks, ideally after people have had a bit of a chance to settle in and the madness has died down. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk to you again. So thanks very much for coming along and uh, best of luck with the start of the semester.